Good day and welcome to a new session in the subject recruitment and selection. Chapter 2 is all about human resource planning. It is said that HR planning is the fundamental of all HR activities. And in the context of management, planning has always been the first step that gives way to organize, recruit, lead, and control. We only have two objectives for this lecture. First is to discuss the nature and scope of human resource planning, including its uses and methodologies. And the second one is to manage to draft a staffing plan. To officially define human resource planning, HR is the ongoing process of systematic planning to achieve optimum use of an organization's most valuable asset, its human resources. Its objective is to ensure the best fit between employees and jobs, while avoiding manpower shortages and surpluses. It is called as an ongoing process because HR planning is a continuous system of development. When vision is met, new plans must be set. And when plans didn't work, HR plans must be revised. Still, a good guide of reference is the answer to meeting goals. There are four key elements in making HR plan. Forecasting future HR requirements, analyzing future HR activities, reconcile requirements and availabilities, and determining gaps and develop action plans. Basically, HR plan is a forecast of what the future could bring and anticipate the possible manpower challenges. Like what is happening now due to pandemic, there are so many establishments closed due to restrictions on opening of businesses. Companies had no choice but to retrench laborers and others closed. Through HR plan, it can be forecasted how many laborers may be retrenched or dismissed. Or through HR plans, company have analysis on intervention plans to offer to those who were affected. HR plan can be illustrated and simply explained by this framework. Basically, HR plan is designed because there is a need for laborers in present or in the future. And those needed laborers must be the right person with the right qualities to perform the job. As to process, using different methodologies, HR will conduct forecasting on the present and future demands, especially if the company is planning for expansion, for example. At the same time, gap analysis must be conducted. The number of positions and weight of task must be studied and should be supplemented by enough manpower. Or else, company will suffer to overtime expenses or employees will feel demotivated due to bulk of work duties. At the same time, if work is too light, employees tend to become lenient. There is no sense of responsibility. Therefore, HR plan rescue the situation to maintain distribution of functions. An output of this is action plan. So this must be developed. Every actions and implementations must be written in HR plan. You may think, why there is a need for HR planning? The answer is simple, because there are changes, whether it is internal or external. Changes are inevitable when it comes to recruitment. People moves inside through promotion, demotion, some retires from services or resigns. This must be considered as possible movement that may be a factor that is needed for the number of people to be hired. On the other hand, there are some external forces that influence manpower. These are impacted by change of technology, change in the economy, and the changes of industry and consumer demand that may require skills that do not currently exist within the company. In short, there is a need for planning because all of the mentioned impacts have an effect to the type of or numbers of employees to be hired and to be filled in to successfully gain the goals. Phase 1 in HR planning is gathering and analyzing information about expected demands based on the business's future plans and supply availability of stock, internally and externally to meet these demands. 
Phase 2 is identifying specific HR objectives which involve decisions related to whether candidates will be promoted from within or to be hired externally or outsourced. Phase 3 is the phase of planning in that involves designing and implementing programs aligned with the company's objectives like benefit programs to satisfy employee needs and impact the ability to retain staff. And the last phase involved monitoring and evaluating the effectiveness of the human resource plan and making changes as appropriate. To provide you with a clear example, Company A is planning to put up another branch next year. Approximately, the branch will be needing 12 employees. In Phase 1, HR must analyze where the 12 employees shall be coming from. In Phase 2, HR must plot options on recruitment. They may consider transferring old employees from older branches to ensure that some employees are trained and there are some who can, are capable of overseeing the operation. Lower positions can be hired or outsourced. Once HR is decided, Phase 3 is the conduct of job analysis. It must be conducted to, to design properly the job functions and whether the attainment of skills of staffs are aligned to the qualifications needed by the positions. And lastly, in Phase 4, once the plan was implemented, they must have closed monitoring whether the plan was effective or not. If it is effective, they may consider withdrawing those borrowed employees or retaining them if functions went well coordinated. In this scenario, explained that HR planning is important and ongoing because of both internal and external environmental changes. They are all considered. In designing an HR plan, there is this succession planning that must be considered before hiring externally. It is the objective of manpower management to retain the best workforce and to be able to get the most from employees. In other words, develop them to be the most suited for higher positions someday. Succession planning is the process whereby company leaders and HR professionals identify key positions within the company and develop plans to fill those positions either with internal or external staff. It is closely tied to leadership development which is the process of providing training and on-the-job experiences to prepare internal staff to step into positions that may become vacant someday. In hiring, internal employees shall be prioritized. You should always offer them with opportunities to grow and promotion is one of the best ways to do that. The good thing about succession planning is that the next in line is already familiar with everything in functions, in standards, and in policies in general. There's no such big adjustments needed. Operations can be guaranteed continuous. Example, Maria is occupying the position of being an administrative manager. She is now 62 years old and about to retire 3 years from now. Through the succession planning, whoever is or are the immediate subordinates of Maria can be trained for the position because most likely they will be the candidates after the retirement of Maria. HR must open the experience to a person or selected persons who have likelihood of portraying same nature of Maria's positions. They should be given both managerial and technical training so that in time that Maria leaves the organization, there is someone who can be in charge with the position and the function of being an admin manager won't be compromised. To give you with a clear illustration how to draft a staffing plan, please analyze the table being shown in the presentation. It is consists of 12 columns with 12 different categories. It should start by thinking what specific task shall be studied. 
this stopping plan will result to analyze how many stop will be hard or should be hard and what specific positions shall be established. Like in the given example on the table, HR department has problem on recruitment operation. Since recruitment is one of the functions of the HR per personnel, but it is observed that the weight of recruitment duties are quite heavy already and should consider to put up another unit who will only perform recruitment activities. The first column is intended for positions or group of positions to be established. Next, you have to determine how many hours will be used to manage the recruitment functions in a week. You also need to put it into a sequence manner as to low or high and classify it as seasonal or infrequent task. Third column is about the primary person who will be responsible on overseeing the position. Fourth column you have to categorize whether the position is under critical, important, or organizational support. The estimated cost is the computation of the position or positions that may incur in a whole year. It may be computed by multiplying the set wage and benefits amount to 12 months. Other expenses like possible developmental programs to be given and even recruitment costs should also be included. A column for remarks is also provided in the sixth column for notes and reminders. It is also a must to determine other functions related to the positions being analyzed. This will allow the evaluator to think or to understand whether there are already existing positions available in the organization and repetition can be prevented. If it is related, usually positions are being fused. Again, you need to determine the number of hours th that will be used per week. The person assigned to, the, to supervise the position and its cost are also part of the requirement. Lastly, the analyzed position shall be determined and categorized according to priority. Now that you know how to draft a stopping plan, you need to know now the different divisions of workforce. This will allow you to understand what positions have to be prioritized for hiring. Workforce can be core workforce, which includes employees who perform the vital activities of the company, and the second one is flexible workforce, which includes employees that are only temporary or that do not contribute to the most essential task the business must complete. For example, in CEFI, CEFI is categorized as an educational institution. Teachers can be considered as the core workforce since the nature of industry is about teaching. Meanwhile, some non-teaching or office personnel can be classified as flexible workforce. Usually, companies consider outsourcing at the same time. This will allow companies to immediately deploy needed personnel, especially if there are changes on the structure of manpower and there are immediate needs for new employments. There are three different classifications of outsourcing. First is contingent workers. Workers who operate on a restricted time basis founded on a contingency such as peak workload or special projects. Example is a gardener, which is hard just because the landscape of facade are needed for the office building. After his project, his employment to the company also ends. Second is outsourcing from staffing firms. It is considered as a great source for immediate deployment that operates with a focus on a particular sectors of the job market. Usually, if companies need immediate workers who are already trained and oriented, they engage the stopping firms with no relationship with the contracted companies, but the only responsibility is to render such functions. Example are sales agents of SM Lucena or SM department stores. They are not under SM employment. 
They are outsourced personnel who just sell products of SM. SM pay their service through their respective principal stopping firms. The last type is independent contractors. They are independent traders, business, or profession in which being offered in general public. For example, a company will be building a new facility for their expansion. They will be partnering to a construction firm to build the entire project. Another is a law firm wherein a company partner with them to provide or to facilitate all their legal matters. To summarize the lecture, HR planning is the fundamental activity or function of human resource. Its objective is to ensure the best fit between employees and the jobs, while avoiding manpower shortages and surpluses. In other terms, there is this enough number of people needed in present or future. There are four key elements in making HR plan. Forecasting future HR requirements, analyzing future HR availabilities, reconcile requirements and availabilities, and determining gaps and develop action plans. These processes are essential activities in HR planning because all of the mentioned impacts have an effect on the type and number of employees that are needed for the business to remain successful. There are four major phases in the process of HR planning. In designing HR plan, consider also succession planning. In drafting a staffing plan, there are 12 columns and specific details that must be completed or filled in or analyzed to complete the illustration. And lastly, before making a staffing plan, HR must know the division of manpower and the role of outsourcing employees to guide them what positions must be prioritized. This is the end of our lecture. If you have questions and clarification, do not hesitate to ask me. Thank you so much for listening.